Hey guys, so Lambda has introduced a response streaming API. So this was announced a couple of days back. So I want to create a video on how to use this uh, response streaming uh, because I found it really interesting and very useful. So let's get started. So the use case I want to show you guys today is this one. So in this particular architecture, we have some files in S3 bucket. Now these files could be PDF, uh, videos, uh, images. Now one of these characteristics of these files could be like these are very large files so it could be like smaller files as well but uh, as you may know there's a limitation in lambda where the payload size has to be less than six megabyte now this has been a limitation particularly when you want to fetch some files from s3 and then uh, send it to the client what you essentially do is uh, you will send the uh, url s3 url to the client then the client this could be a web or mobile application. Then it will request the data back from the S3. So then the S3 will send the data through CloudFront. So the CloudFront is, will stream the data back to the client. So that is how uh, we have been doing so far because of this uh, limitation in uh, Lambda function. Now this is not only for the S3 data. Now if you have some data in your databases and a query that is that the uh, client had made contain more than six megabytes of payload, then again, you have to take some other measures such as, you know, compress it and then uh, send it or else uh, you have to use pagination quite a bit. But now with the Lambda streaming API, this limitation is no longer valid. So with this, we can stream large files that are more than six megabyte back to the client. So let's see how to do that. So whenever a client is requesting for such a file, let's imagine we are requesting for a PDF file that is more than six megabytes, let's say 10 megabytes. So what we will do is when the request get to the Lambda function, we will make a request to the S3 to create a read stream. And then we will use Lambda stream API to stream the S3 data back to the client. So we are not going to load the entire PDF into the Lambda's memory and then send the whole bunch to the client, but instead we will stream it from S3 and from Lambda again we stream it to the client. So this this could be web or mobile client. Now if you look at this diagram, we don't have an API gateway in front of the Lambda. Now the reason is the Lambda streaming API does not support this Lambda proxy integration with API gateway. Similarly, it doesn't support with the application load balancer as well. So what we do instead is we will use CloudFront to intercept all our requests and then from CloudFront to Lambda, we will use this Lambda function URLs. So we will get the function URL of this particular Lambda and set that as the CloudFront origin. So the CloudFront can forward those requests to the Lambda function and the Lambda function will get the data from the S3 and stream it back to the client through CloudFront. So that is what we are going to do and we'll discuss more details while we are doing the implementation. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I'll first go to S3. Now here in S3, I've created a S3 bucket called Lambda Response Stream 1234. So this is the bucket that I'm serving my PDF file. So this is the example PDF file that I have uploaded. So this is of uh, size 10.6 megabyte. So it's about six megabytes. So if I'm not using this uh, response streaming API, I won't be able to send this file through Lambda because the payload is six megabyte, the maximum payload that has been supported. So unless I'm using this response streaming API, I won't be able to send this file through Lambda because the maximum payload size for the other mode is only six megabits. All right, so the permission wise, uh, so this is a private bucket. So I actually blocked uh, public access as well. There are no any bucket policies whatsoever. So next, let me go to the Lambda. Now in AWS Lambda, if you now create a new Lambda function, so in the console, you can give a function name, uh, runtime, architecture, so on and so forth. Now these are defaults, but if you expand the advanced section, then you should find this enable function URL. So you can just click this. And when you check this off, then you can select the auth type. So a Lambda URL right now, it's suppose I am and none. So we are going to select none here and then we will essentially have a publicly accessible Lambda URL. But the most important thing is the invoke mode. 
So previously we only had this buffered mode, but now there's a new addition which is the response stream. Otherwise the response streaming API won't work. So these are the most important configuration. So right now I use uh, AWS console, but let me show you how to do with the infrastructure as code with serverless framework. Okay, so I have created a serverless service and this is my serverless YAML file. So I named it as Lambda Stream API and I'm using this version three of serverless CLI. And then I'm using the runtime for the Lambda function as Node.js 16. Now, one thing that I want to mention is that uh, right now the response streaming API is only working uh, for Node 14.x above. So 14.x, 16.x, 18.x, so on and so forth. So that's something you need to remember. So here I'm using 16.x and then I have a function defined here. So this is called download PDF function. So the code related to that is available in the handler function, which is this one. So this is the handler code. So I'm exporting this function download PDF. Now look at this. So this is the main difference. Now unlike in the buffered mode where we'll just add async and then uh, this is our method signature and then we'll write the code here and then return the response. Here with the response streaming API, we have to wrap our Lambda function with this. That is AWS Lambda. This is a global variable that is available in the Lambda runtime now. And then you have to use this method streamify response. So you have to like wrap your Lambda function with this method. So when you do that, you get access to a couple of variables. One is response stream. Now this is the variable that you are writing your stream data. So whenever you write the stream data to this particular variable, then that gets streamed out to your client. So that is how it essentially works. Now this context object is not going to be changed. This is a regular context object. But uh, it's important to note that this response stream API is available to you now. So what I'm doing here right now is I am accessing that particular S3 object, which is the uh, which is the PDF I showed you previously. And this is the bucket name, Lambda response stream 1234. This is the bucket that I have created previously. So what I will do next is I will use this S3 get object API. Now I'm using AWS DK version two here and I'm creating a read stream. So I'll pass these parameters. So AWS SDK S3 API is connecting to this uh, S3 bucket and create a read stream. And then I'm using this Node.js pipeline, now stream pipeline, to pipe this uh, request stream data to the client. So I'm using pipeline and then I'm passing this request stream and this is the response stream. Now you can directly write to the response stream, but uh, this is more performant. So I'm using this pipeline function. Now, before I pass my response stream to the pipeline, I'm wrapping it again, another function from this uh, AWS Lambda public uh, variable, uh, AWS Lambda dot response stream from, so I'm creating a response stream from this response stream with the metadata, of course. So metadata is essentially the status code that we want to return as well as any headers. So in this case, since I am returning an PDF, so I have to set the content type to application slash PDF. That's it. So this is the code related to my Lambda function. By the way, this code will be available to you with this video. But uh, what I want to show you next is this uh, serverless configuration. So we have to do few more configuration. Now we are done with the serverless function, but we need to create a couple of resources. Now one of the resources is AWS Lambda function URL. Now you saw it in the UI, there's a way we can create a, a function URL, enable a function URL and set its authentication type. So how can we do it with uh, CloudFormation? So uh, you can use this uh, type AWS Lambda URL type and we can set the properties. So I create a function URL with the logical name download PDF URL and I'm setting this uh, properties, the auth type to none, invoke mode to response stream. And then I have to connect this with the Lambda function so I'm connecting it to uh, it with this uh, download PDF Lambda function. So I'm referencing its uh, logical name here, download PDF Lambda function. By the way, if you are using serverless framework, the uh, function uh, logical name is not exactly this one. You have to do serverless package and see what exactly this uh, turns out to be. So it's essentially turning out to be download PDF, the same thing, uh, except this, the first one is capitalized 
and then lambda function suffix at the end. So that's why I uh, referred to it like so. And then the lambda function URL needs to be publicly available. So that's why I create another resource, uh, lambda permission, and set the properties function name, the same function name, uh, function auth type to none, so it is set to be public. And then whoever using this lambda URL will be able to do lambda invoke function URL uh, IAM method or the IAM action. And this is applicable for anybody, so it's publicly available. All right, that's it. So we have a Lambda function and Lambda URL. And now we can go ahead and do serverless deploy, SLS deploy. Now I already done that. So now if I go to AWS, I will go to my function section and let me find that function. Here we go. So this is the function Lambda stream API download PDF. So this is the function that I just deployed. Now look at this. So I, I can see my function URL. So this is my function URL. And now I can also see my Lambda code as well. Here we go. So the Lambda code is also available. And if I go to the configuration section, so let's see if the auth type and uh, invoke mode is set. As you can see, the proper auth type is set here, the publicly available, and also the invoke mode. This is the most important one. The rest response stream is also set. Alright, so now I can use this uh, function URL to access my PDF. So let's check this. So I'll take a copy and let me paste it and hit enter. Our PDF is getting loaded. So it takes a bit of time because uh, that 10.5 or 10.6 megabytes needs to be streamed. Here we go. Now it's loaded. So this is the PDF with uh, 10.6 uh, megabyte. Now if you are not using the response streaming, this is not possible because the, then we will get uh, an error. Payload size is too big. Okay, so what have we done so far? So we have a three bucket and in the three bucket we have this PDF as well, more than six megabyte of data. And then we have the Lambda function and also we create the Lambda function URL. Now we are able to access this uh, PDF or stream this PDF data through this uh, Lambda function URL. Now I want to further optimize it. I'm going to connect a CloudFront as well because every time that I'm using this Lambda function or the Lambda function URL, it will be streaming from this uh, S3 bucket. So I want to optimize for the performance. For that, I will use CloudFront to cache this data at the edge location. So maybe the first request, it will go to the origin. Now we are going to set a Lambda URL as our origin and uh, fetch the data and stream the data to the client. And in the meantime, the data will be cached in the CloudFront. So the subsequent request will be served from the CloudFront distribution. Now, in addition to that, I can set all the security measures as well. For, I can set up WAF. So my Lambda function URL and the streaming APIs uh, will be protected by web application firewall as well. So how can you do that? Very straightforward. We'll uh, go to CloudFront. So you can go ahead and create a CloudFront distribution. And you can give it a name. And here you have to uh, provide the origin domain. Now, as I mentioned, we are going to set our function URL as our origin. So you can copy this and then paste it here. Make sure to remove this HTTPS and this one as well. So as for the protocol, you can set HTTPS because uh, Lambda function URLs are accessible with HTTPS as you can see here. So you can set the protocol to HTTPS here and then give any name for the origin. And this is very important, the caching behavior. So here in the caching behavior, you can go to this cache key and origin section. Now, whenever you paste the Lambda function URL or CloudFront automatically detects as the Lambda function. So it has added a recommended caching policy, which is caching disabled. Now it makes sense because uh, sometimes uh, we use this uh, Lambda URLs to create our REST APIs with, uh, without using uh, API gateway or so. So in that case, we don't want to cache anything. But in this particular case, we wanted to cache data at the CloudFront. That's our main objective, right? So here you can use maybe this uh, manage cache policy, which is cache optimized. So if I go here and then view the policy, 
can see the TTL set in the minimum is one, maximum is this much, but there's a default value, right? So this is uh, what is by default added. So this much of second, the data will be cached. So this is all good. So you can uh, use this uh, cache policy. And then you can go ahead and create it. That's it. Now I already went ahead and create one. Let me quickly show you that because it's going to take some time to create this CloudFront distribution. So this is the CloudFront distribution I just created before this uh, recording started. And we can go to the origin and you can see the Lambda uh, URL origin is connected here. So it's set as a custom origin. And the behavior, similarly, this is the default behavior. So whenever I use the CloudFront domain, it's going to hit this origin. And I'm using this cache optimized. So now when the distribution is ready, I can use this domain name. And then I'll be able to load the PDF file. So it's here it's loaded. Let me do a refresh one more time. And now it's again loaded. You can check the cache hits and cache misses from CloudFront logs. Here in the CloudFront, you can check the uh, caching statistics here. Select the distribution. So my distribution is this one. And here we go. I see some requests. And if you scroll down further, so I will see how many hits are there, how many cache misses are there, and so on. So I see some cache hits. All right, so this is what I want to show you guys. I guess now it's clear to you how to use this Lambda Response Streaming API. But before I end, I wanted to mention about the pricing aspects as well. Now previously, when I'm returning data from uh, the other mode, which is the buffered mode, you don't necessarily have to uh, pay for the payload that the Lambda is returning. But with this streaming API, you can return big files. So you can go up to 20 megabytes and even you can increase that limit using a support ticket. So there's a cost involved, some additional cost involved. Uh, if your payload is greater than six megabytes. So if it is less than six megabytes, there's no any payment uh, or cost. But if it is larger than six megabytes, then there's a payment. So payment is essentially, I think it's uh, 0 0.008 uh, dollars per gigabyte. And that depends on the region as well. You can check the uh, pricing page for more details. So be aware, there will be some additional cost if your payload is more than six megabytes. So with that, I'm going to conclude this video. Thanks for watching guys.